Egg yolk, what is going on? Viewers of the tube, my name is Tyler, the host of this channel, and I'd like to introduce you to the channel that knows these jail escapes are only the beginning. <laughs> You know our Shawshank Redemption. It's time for Chico Crypto. Well, I think it's time to dig down into the rabbit hole as many viewers have been asking for it and things have been playing out exactly as I predicted. What did I predict? The coming digital dollar. Last week on March 20th, I made this video, Cash Stimulus to Americans. How? By checks? No, it's crypto. Well, things really started to get interesting. During the night on March 23rd, news started to be released that the stimulus bills for economic relief here in America contain language about creating a digital dollar. Coindesk brought the news. House stimulus bills envision digital dollar to ease coronavirus recession. And according to the article, under the draft bills shared last week, dubbed the Take Responsibility for Workers and Families Act and the Financial Protections and Assistance for America's Consumers, States, Businesses, and Vulnerable Populations Act. The Federal Reserve, the nation's central bank, could use a digital dollar and digital wallets to send payments to qualified individuals, consisting of $1,000 for minors and $2,000 to legal adults. Well, that news cycle, it went quick because by yesterday, the 24th, one of the bills removed the digital dollar language. Just 10 hours later from their first article, Coindesk posted this one, digital dollar stripped from latest US coronavirus relief bill. And in the article, the latest version of the Take Responsibility for Workers and Family Act revealed late Monday does not contain any language around a digital dollar in its section on direct stimulus payments. Hmm, I wonder why it was removed so quickly. Why was it in there in the first place? Well, the newest draft of the bill is much more vague. How people will be paid, which starts on page 1090. It's just non-specific and there's just amounts named, but not how the payments are coming through, a check, debit card, or digitally. Although there is that other bill, the Financial Protections and Assistance for Americans Consumers, States, Businesses, and Vulnerable Populations Act. Here is that bill, and as we can see, it will require member banks to maintain pass-through digital dollar wallets for certain persons and for other purposes. And if we search by the term digital, it is found 35 times throughout this bill. Now this one isn't proposing creating a digital crypto dollar, but a digitized version of the existing dollar. According to the draft, the digital dollar will be dollar balances consisting of digital ledger entries recorded as liabilities in the accounts of any Federal Reserve Bank. So it would be on a digital ledger, as the bill says, consisting of digital ledger entries, which means they would be using a blockchain, most likely a private consortium chain, fully controlled by the Fed and its member organization. But here's what is interesting. Going back to that Coindesk article about the first bill being stripped of its digital dollar language. They mention this bill at the end and say it still mentions the digital dollar, although that language is expected to be removed move from that bill as well, according to a source familiar with the matter. So once again, why was it introduced to only be stripped in the blink of an eye? We can't just blink and let the fact that they were planning on doing it slip right by, as I'm sure that is exactly why they did it. The elite accidentally revealed their ultimate plans and things are going to get hairy. Let me try to explain why. So the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, they are the agency that ensures your deposits in the bank will actually be there. And this FDIC isn't the Fed. It's a completely independent agency. The FDIC is a primary federal regulator of banks that are not chartered by the states and that do not join the Federal Reserve System, aka they regulate the private banks. And you know what they were created in response to? Bank failures and the bank runs during the Great Depression as there was a desperate scramble for cash, a liquidity crunch, and a failing stock market. Sounds similar to what is going on right about now? 
Well, that old FDIC tweeted this yesterday. Forget the mattress. Keeping large sums of cash at home is risky. The best place to protect your money is in an FDIC insured bank where it's safe and sound. Learn how the FDIC safeguards your money. Well, let's just learn from FDIC Chairman Jelena McWilliams. We're living in unprecedented time. At a time of a pandemic like this, it is way too easy to get confused and to have fear about what you should be doing with your money in your accounts, especially as you're looking at the volatility in the stock market and the financial sector. This is what I would like you to take away from this. Your money is safe at the banks. The last thing you should be doing is pulling your money out of the banks now, thinking that it's going to be safer someplace else. You don't want to be walking around with large wads of cash, and you certainly don't want to be hoarding cash in your mattress. It didn't pan out well for so many people. And I will tell you this, no depositor has lost a penny of their insured deposits since 1933, when the FDIC was created. So if you're talking about having your money in a safe place, please, keep it in an FDIC insured bank. So to me, that reeks of desperation, basically begging you to keep your dollars with the banks. And so why would they do this? Because they know a bank run is coming. The banks across America don't have and never have the deposits to fulfill an American population withdraw. And that is why I personally think we should not count out the digital dollar. You got to realize something. The head of the Treasury Department, Steve Mnuchin, Snoochie Boochies, just brought on somebody interesting to the office of the comptroller of the currency. What is this branch? Well, it serves to charter, regulate, and supervise all national banks, the federally licensed branches and agencies of foreign banks in the United States basically regulates what the FDIC doesn't. So back in 2017, when Steve Mnuchin was brought in as the treasury secretary, he was bringing in some friends with him who worked at One West Bank. Yeah, that bank, formerly Indy Mac, who Steve bought after the financial crisis. He changed its name and then was accused of highly unethical foreclosures, including on elderly and widows. So who did he bring on? According to this CNBC article back when he was nominated, people familiar with the discussions, the Trump administration is considering two of his deputies to head key regulatory agencies, former One West General Counsel Brian Brooks for the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and former One West Chief Executive Joseph Odding for the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. Joseph Odding, he made it. He was sworn in shortly after, and he is currently the most powerful person in the banking industry as the comptroller of the currency. But Brian Brooks, yeah, we remember him. We talked about him a few days ago. He didn't get the position for the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So what did Brian go do? He went to Coinbase, became their chief legal officer, and created the roadmap for the USDC, Coinbase's digital dollar. So when I made that video last week about Brian leaving Coinbase and joining the office of the comptroller as their chief operating officer, I didn't realize Brian was best friends with Steve and Joseph at One West. These guys have worked together really freaking closely. Going back to that group One West photo, there is Brian and there is Joseph. So what is going on? Why was Brian suddenly brought on after his short stint at Coinbase after creating a stable coin? What was he even doing there? Well, here's where things start to get wonky and not make full sense, but I will try to wrap it up towards the end. Here are Steve Mnuchin's words in December on a Fed coin, like a digital dollar. Let's listen in. Okay, but the Chinese have decided to get into this as well. And so the last half of my question was, uh, there's been some, some thought process about the Fed getting into it and having their own digital currency. Is this something you see necessary, something you don't want to get into, something that's, that shouldn't be out there? Where, 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 where do you see this going? So again, I, I would differentiate what China is doing from what a Bitcoin or a Facebook would do. What China is doing is really issuing digital currency in lieu of physical cash, and they can track all that. So it's, 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 they will be able to track where that goes. Um, that's different than a Bitcoin. It's no different than in the U.S. if, you know, money is sent on the Fed wire system, it, it can be tracked and money through SWIFT has identifiers. So, again, I would differentiate kind of what central banks are doing from what a Libra or a Bitcoin is doing. As it relates to the Fed and Chair Powell and I have discussed this at length, I think we both agree 
uh, for the near future, in the next five years, we see no need for the Fed to issue digital currency. And that's because, again, we have a very uh, sophisticated system. The Fed is working on electronic payment system. We, do, we need to make sure they're real-time electronic payment system in the U.S., but thank you for your concern. So Steve says no way to a Fed coin, not in the next five years, but his buddy is working in the private sector, being a strong advocate for crypto and stable coins. Per example, just a month before Steve's public words, in November of 2019, Brian authored this Fortune magazine piece, a digital dollar for a strong United States financial system. Let's just read some of his own words. The time has come for a tokenized version of the dollar, and it's not just for those of us in the cryptocurrency world who think so. In recent months, senior US officials have been exploring the idea of minting greenbacks on the distributed ledger software known as blockchain. The idea appears inevitable. The only question is who should create the digital dollar, the government or the private sector? He then explains top Fed officials in Congress were pushing for it. Chris Giancarlo, former CFTC head, is a strong advocate. And I like what he says here. The timing of these considerations is not coincidental, and it reflects new challenges to America's role as the linchpin of the global financial system. Brian then explains the path forward. The true question facing our policymakers is whether our government needs to create the digital dollar or whether the private sector can do so effectively. The best path forward is one that harnesses our country's remarkable capacity for innovation and also reflects government's historical practice of setting broad guide rails for private innovation within the financial system. That means letting innovators event and letting the government regulate. In short, the private sector should build the technology and the public sector should set monetary policy. Crazy words from a guy that is the second most powerful person now in the banking industry. But let's just get back to Steve because he has had more recent words about cryptocurrency. In February, during the House hearing on the 2021 budget, just a month before, he brought Brian onto his new position. How does your department, Mr. Secretary, plan to respond to this rapidly evolving technology of cryptocurrency and other digital assets. Well, th thank you. And uh, as you've commented, we're, we're very supportive of bringing the Secret Service back home to the Treasury where it started and, and the efficiencies of, of having it together. Uh, we're spending a lot of time on the issue of cryptocurrencies and digital payment systems. It's a, a crucial area. and. There's a lot of different things that get grouped together into this one area, so let me just be brief. But uh, on pure cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, and there are others, um, we want to make sure that these are not used as the equivalent of secret bank accounts. So we are working with FinCEN, and we will be rolling out new regulations to be very clear on greater transparency so that law enforcement can see where the money is going and that this isn't used for money laundering. There is another component of the market which people refer to as stable coins, where we do think uh, technology can be used to reduce payment processing quite considerably, particularly for small dollar payments cross-border. And then there's a third component that people are looking at, which is a central bank digital issued currency. Uh, that is something that Chair Powell and I do not think the U.S. needs to consider now, but could consider again down the road. Doesn't it seem like Minucci, Snoochie, Boochies Snoochie, Boochies <laughs> might just be warming up to crypto. And he specifically brought up stable coins like USDC, of which Brian has worked on. So, my friends, if the government gets back into a stimulus funding bill corner, which day by day seems more likely, are they going to rely on private sector technology? like USDC and Coinbase to issue the payment. Steve's good buddy Brian says that's the way to go. And let's just replay what he said about stablecoins. There is another component of the market which people refer to as stablecoins, where we do think uh, technology can be used to reduce payment processing quite considerably, particularly for small dollar payments. Yep, stablecoins could be used to reduce processing times for smaller dollar payments. And then let's just hear what Steve said recently about getting money to Americans. We're looking at sending checks to Americans immediately. And what we've heard from hardworking Americans, many companies have now shut down, whether it's bars or restaurants, 
Americans need cash now, and the president wants to get cash now. And I mean now in the next two weeks. Yeah, in just two weeks. And that was a week ago. You got seven days left, one freaking week. The traditional system will be impossible if they want speed. Next week, in two weeks, hell, even if in a month. And partnering with the private sector may be the only way. Cheers, I'll see you next time.